Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, first of all, do you have one of these? Because if you do, are you using it correctly? Because I see a lot of people online that need answers to very simple questions. So what we're going to start here is a GT1000 handbook video series. This is your new sound card. This is your touring rig, your recording rig, and potentially your master controller for any other devices on stage. So without further ado, let's kick in to today's lesson. The GT1000 Handbook Part 1. In today's lesson we are going to talk about setting up your tone from scratch, setting your input level, to picking out an amp, to setting that amp correctly and how that amp responds to the built-in mics, cabs and how you have to keep going back and forth. We're going to build a loop, we're going to play it over and over and I'm going to show you how to go from an average sounding guitar sound to something usable on stage. So, what we're going to do is create a blank patch together. We are going to write and we are going to initialize. Okay, now, when you start, this expression pedal becomes a volume pedal so you might not get signal straight away but it's a very simple fix we just go in to find the foot volume here you go minimum turn it all the way up to 100 and that way okay and now we are going to save that uh, you're going to see this loading on the screen here while I'm working on the actual thing. The USB is a little bit slower, but uh, once you're in a patch and it, programming, it's a lot better. So let's start off by talking through your effects chain over here. And it looks the same on the pedal. You're going to want to leave all these blank to get started, that is you just scroll around with this and you turn them on and off by tapping six now when you when you first get the pedal something that you're going to need to do go into menu go into hardware settings go into other and lcd contrast you're going to want to adjust that because it comes um factory set to one and you can't always see the lines so it will look sort of like this you can't always see those lines on a stage so let's go in other how long we put it on two or three there you go now i can see those lines nice okay but before we even start at least we know we got sound before we even start we're going to go into menu we're going to go and have a look at some of our settings let's start with in and out settings input that is where you're going to want your guitar coming in just over is fine gives it a, a hint of bite but as long as you got some headroom there for it to breathe then you're good and you just adjust it over here so you can see i've got mine set to plus one I found it was a nice middle ground between my two guitars. Then, main out, output select, record. There's other options there, we're not going to go into those. Global EQ, I've obviously made a few adjustments because that's what worked for me on stage. Um, but a very important one 
is over here. You want to set a high cut and a low cut. I set mine to 200 because on a big stage with big bins and whatnot, you get a lot of mud. And then I set it to about 8K because anything from 8K to 10K and above just becomes really brittle and harsh. Output level, just leave that as is. But you can flip between that and that. So leave it as is. Let's talk about control assigns. Control functions, you're going to see this. And I can bring it up over here as well. It might be easier to understand in Blue uh, Boss Tone Studio. But basically every one of these you can set to a patch setting or a system. And you'll see over here, as well as over here on the screen, I like to set mine to reverb on, delay, master delay on, and a BPM, tap tempo. So no matter what patch I'm on, I can always hook these two on, get my patch going, get my uh, tap going. Assign settings, they look a little bit like this. That we'll get into later. Okay, so now we have the pedal set up into a sort of workable situation here. So, the next thing you ignore all of this. Don't worry about it, you can set this all up later. But you're going to want to put your... Uh, you press knob 6 in and counterclockwise. Take it right back to the beginning. And here's a little tip for you. Go into mo uh, menu. Control. Control assign. Leave these as is. Let's take bank up. And we're going... We're going to turn bank down off and we're going to use bank up. There's a looper section here, there. That basically turns us into a record, uh, dub, stop, clear, all in one go. So let's give this a go. And what you can do now is you can put the guitar down because we are done. So I'm going to unplug and put my guitar down. So for this demo, I'm going to show you on the pedal. Yeah, just to check this is working. There we go. So now what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through the cab types with that one drive on and then we are going to find a drive and then move on from there. I think a 2x12 sounds cool. Let's start with that. Keep it simple. And for this part, you don't have to worry about uh, the mic. The mic choice and distance, all of these here, because that we do later. First, we're going to go through the drives.
Okay, it doesn't sound like there's much to it right now. That's because we haven't started downing things incorrectly. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you what the sag and resistance does. But to me, a rule of thumb is resistance. The further anti-clockwise you go, the brighter it gets, and the further clockwise, the duller it gets. Sag is more of a woof, and it depends where your resonance is. Okay, that's just something basic for now, um, just to show you how the sag and resistance can really change it. But now the next thing that can change it is the mics. So I'm going to go back to master, and we're going to go back to where the cab was, the 2x12, and we're going to pick a mic, pick a distance, and pick a position. Here we go. That'll work for now, and now we're going to go back to the amp and continue to dial it in just a little more. Now, another tip that I want to show you guys is um, when I get to a point where I feel like I'm just not getting enough out of any of the amps, what I do is I take an EQ unit like this and I start using it as basically a treble piece. So we're going to turn it on, we're going to up the level, and we're going to just slightly adjust the low and high gain, and maybe even bring up uh, a mid frequency or two. So let's give that a go.
see how once you start dialing this all in, the cabs really start to shine now. Alright, and now the next thing I'd like to do is to put in a treble or clean boost. So here we go. Alright, and then you want to have an EQ after the end where you want to pull down um, a high and a low cut. So your low cut you want to do around 120 to 200 and a high cut towards 8k. And while we add it, let's check out the mids and see if there's any horrible frequencies. Uh, there usually is a whistle somewhere around 4K or 2K. So we get rid of that and we get rid, rid of a little bit of the squashy mids at the bottom. There we go. Now you're obviously going to notice between putting it on and off that there's going to be some natural frequencies that you like. So then you're going to just have to compensate and bring it back slightly or open up the cue. And just remember the higher the cue, so 16 is like super clinical and then 2 is like a very wide um, band of EQs. So let's try and bring back just a little bit of the naturalness.
Cool, and there's a basic way to start developing a tone. Um, there's many more things you can go into compression, but I find I often find myself overdoing things, and then when I look back, I end up turning them off or going back to basics and, and enjoying the natural sort of just um, EQ distortion pedal into an amp, which is over there, into an EQ and out. And then when we go out, remember that we're also cutting some low end there and some high end over there. And basically what we're trying to do is create a sound that we enjoy using and playing and making it as easy as possible for the engineer. I mean, we've got stereo um, abilities here and we can really go over the top. But, you know, at the end of the day, I've, I've even gone back to mono, um, mainly because I wanted to refocus on just getting a good guitar sound. So I've stopped the loop. I'm going to plug my guitar back in quickly and then I'll just show you what I've got off the bat. One sec. Okay, now that I'm plugged in, do you hear that? So what we're going to do is quickly adjust the noise gate. And you're going to want to take noise gate number one and put it right at the beginning before the EQ and distortion. Turn it on. And then, you know, adjust that to taste. I normally put that as a starting point around 45 with a very quick release. You want input, and then noise gate number two. I put that after all the amp tone work that I do in EQ and whatnot. So, but this one, we're gonna put around 35 with a slower release time and set it to noise gate input. I'm still getting a little bit there. So we can raise this one up. You can go all the way to about 70 or so before it starts cutting your lead. So now that that's there, let's raise this one up a little. There we go. That'll work for now. So here's what I've made right now. And now obviously when you have your guitar in your hand, you're going to feel things like I'd like a bit more bottom end, a little less sparkle on the top. So now I'm going to make those adjustments.
never forget to go right back to the start and check that you're happy. Like even now, I changed the mic on the cab. I ended up changing all the settings because I preferred the cream and the bottom end of the. So now we're going to just uh, reapply a few EQs. I think that's a great starting point, so I'm going to save that. So I think that'll be it for this one. That's how to set up a basic tone, how to check that your inputs are right. Leave a comment, let me know what you want to see. Thanks for watching that video, guys. I hope that that has helped you just a little bit to understand the um, power that this little guy has. You really can create huge sounds with this and i hope that it helped you see just how important your eqs are at the beginning your distortion pedals and how they all interact with each other to create tones you you must remember this pedal doesn't have a sound you pick amps you pick distortions you you eq it the way you want it and you create a tone that is universal to you and that's something i really enjoy about this pedal uh, all the other modelers always go, this is a Mesa, this is a Marshall, this is a that, this is a this. Boss goes, this is a couple that we have tried to mod, like uh, the Rec DM, for example, or the there's an orange stack. And there's a couple more, but the beauty of this thing is that isn't the sound. You've got to take that, you've got to run it through impulse responses built in or third party you've got to apply some distortion uh, pedals or overdrive boosts or eq pre or eq post and you eventually create something that is universal to you so let me know what you guys want to see in the next one i'm going to try and do these as often as possible and take us right to the end and to the max and hopefully i can learn a few things as well along the way because i use this every night and i use it to record my guitars and i thoroughly enjoy it likes welcome please subscribe if you enjoy this and uh or if you're just into gear in general and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers